This is just We the People News. All right, a little bit about more uh, information on juries, just in case you happen to be on a jury or ever was on a jury. What did they tell you and what do you actually know? Remember, everything they tell you is always hearsay, people. Always. Unless you research yourself. So, as I was picked for a jury once, and then the second time I was not picked, but I was called to a jury, um, I never researched being a juror. I actually never researched law. Now, I have did, I did know a couple of things, and uh, luckily for me, a lot of mine was more of a common sense thing, okay? Uh, so, the first one I was on, uh, the, the guy was sentenced, was actually released, because what the evidence was, was, you know, uh, show the evidence that it was not true and correct, okay? Uh, but because I knew the common sense, what evidence they showed. Now, can they lie? Yes. I did not know that at the time. So, I don't know. Uh, number two, I was not picked, but I told you on the other video about why. And, but I knew a little bit. And that's the reason why I knew that an innocent woman pleaded guilty. And then whatever the jury decide, which I never found out what they decide, what her punishment was. However, I'm here to say with facts that an innocent man, or uh, innocent woman was uh, suckered into believing that a law existed where it did not exist. And by watching cop watchers in Texas and all that, you guys mostly know about the 3802. Okay, and this was, uh, the last jury thing was almost four years ago. But I knew about this, and that's when I spoke up, was there any coercions of this? Because 3802 uh, does not say she had to identify herself. So they kind of just didn't pick me. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and proceed forward on this one. So you find yourself in a position where you had not nipped things in a bud. You hadn't resolved things at the early stage. Or you're just realizing, oh crap, there's a lot of things that were done that they're not doing a self-confession on. Because they think, I can't pick it up. Or you haven't done your due diligence enough to pay attention to the subtleties, which happens. Or even if you did do your due diligence, it just didn't come up. But now you realize, oh crap, this has been lingering too long and they're very comfortable. And they're going, all right, sir, all right, ma'am, we're gonna go to trial now. Okay. Do a constitutional challenge to the case. Do all the basic stuff. You yeah, have front of defense. Reject and rebut the allegations. Put your affidavit of truth. But in the process of doing all of that good stuff, know that you have the ability to actually choose the jury that's going to be here in the matter. This is presuming you're the defendant. A lot of people speak of the right to jury of your own peer, right to jury of your own peer. But what does that mean? Right to jury of your own peer is people around the same age as you, people with similar uh, life experience. Now, I want to go by hearsay, okay? I heard a guy up in California, this is a few years ago before I actually started researching things and all that kind of stuff. But I actually heard a guy challenged uh, the jury, is there anyone in this courtroom that's you or U.S. citizens? And every jury member raised their hand. And the guy says, okay, y'all are all dismissed. 
because he wasn't claiming he was a U.S. citizen, right, y'all? Uh, so he can, they cannot be a jury of his peers. So the courts, the judge, ordered the bailiff to go out and find people that was not U.S. citizens. Now, this is really when time, actually when uh, people did not believe in the border crossing, both right and left, okay? So to go out and try to find someone that would claim they are not a U.S. citizen, they weren't going to find one. So a few hours later, they came in and, sorry, Judge, we could not find anybody that would claim they're not U.S. citizens. And his case was dismissed. Now that again, I had to say, it's hearsay, okay? Uh, so I do not have any factual evidence to back this up. But it, it brought this up, right? So I thought, well, you know, juries of your peers, right? Uh, so if it ever does happen to me, I do not claim under the title 18 U.S.C. 911 that claiming U.S. citizen is a felony. I cannot for incriminate myself into a felony, so I am not a U.S. citizen. I'm not going to do nothing bad, but you never know. I go cough watching, I go to jail and all this kind of stuff, you know, you never know, right? Anyway, I wanted to bring that up, speaking of juries of tears. Experiences, similar occupation, uh, similar nationality, and social political status. And most importantly, your knowledge of the Constitution. Your affirmative defense and your source of claims are most likely going to be backed by the state or federal constitution, regardless, depending on the one you choose to use. And if you're doing a jury trial, this is presuming that they're trying to do a jury trial. If they're not, then you must demand for one. And a jury trial, if the constitution is the backbone of everything that goes on, then those jury have to be able to put the Constitution into consideration. And that is where Roy Dyer comes in. Your ability to pick your own jury. If you are not afforded the ability to do so, that's an ex parte judgment right there. That's an ex parte proceedings. That is unconstitutional. If they're going to do an ex parte proceedings in a constitutional manner, they must first inform you that they're trying to go without you, and they must have given you notice of it within a reasonable amount of time. Another thing regarding the, the prerequisite steps you ought to take if you have not written a motion to dismiss before all this, even when they're telling you, all right, trial date is set for a month from now, or uh, we're going to have a status check on what's going on before a trial date is set. And no matter how close they say the trial date is, you can always test the sufficiency of whatever claim they bring to you. And that is a motion to dismiss. And oftentimes when you challenge the constitutionality of the proceedings or the status, it's the statute, it automatically challenges the subject matter jurisdiction and the personal jurisdiction. That kind of puts a wrench in their gear also. So you should always put a motion to dismiss it because that's the purpose. To try to dismiss it before even going to trial. Honestly, you should not even be going to trial in order to dispose of a case nine out of ten times. If, what, if you really didn't harm anyone, and you really deserve freedom based on you knowing that you deserve it and that you're not waiting for somebody to determine the course of your life for you, you should be proactive enough to even stop that thing from getting to trial. And the motion to dismiss is the way to do it. You can dispose the case before it goes to trial. Just make sure you have your evidence in and make sure that you do it 
with the power of prayer the front of the face. So just like anything else, it's always important to know what the subject matter really means. And in this case, the subject matter is more diet. And you will later find out that the void dyer is not just about juries and jurors. It applies to any witness in general. And it's basically the process of you determining whether they are capable of telling the truth and that they are truly impartial. So void dyer itself is a matter of constitutional importance. In Illinois, the 1870 Illinois Constitution states in its Article 2, Subsection 9, that all criminal prosecution accused shall have the right to appear defendant in person and by counsel to demand nature and cause of accusation and to have a copy of the copy bureau. Here it is right here to meet the witness face to face to have process to compel the attendance of witness in his behalf. This process that compels the witness, the attendance of witness in his behalf, meaning the favorable manner to a view, that process is to avoid eye determining their competency and their ability to tell the truth. The federal version, it's in the Sixth Amendment, mimics the same verbal. All criminal prosecution. The accused shall enjoy the right to speedy trial, public trial, by an impartial jury. Impartial jury process of determining their impartiality is void eye. So we hear impartial jury all the time and then witness on his behalf. But how what is the operation of law to that? It's void eye. Impartial jury state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed. This is blah, 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 blah. All the accusations. Be confronted with a witness against him. To have compulsory process of obtaining witness in his favor. How do you have a, a witness in your favor? Or a jury in your favor? You got it. Boy, died by determining their competency and their ability to tell the truth. Can I have a jury or a witness in your favor or in an impartial manner if they're not even aware of the Constitution? If they don't go through the same functional, practical things in life or have not went through the functional, practical things in life that you went through, they cannot relate to your state of mind as to the circumstance that got you in that situation whereby you are now needing to do a void diet. Are you following this? So even with that behalf right there, right? Uh, let's just say for argument's sake, we'll use me, right? Since I believe, right, in Title 18 U.S.C., uh, 911 being a felony claiming you a citizen, right? Now, that being said, how am I going to get an impartial jury? Right? There's not very many out there that's going to be impartial for me. In fact, the lawyer is going to convince y'all that I'm wrong because y'all didn't research it, right? The lawyers may have researched it. But lawyers are legal to lie. So, they're going to use trickeries to get you to believe that I'm wrong. Even though it's codified that I may or may not be right for video purposes only. Okay? 
So we got to be real careful to pick out the juries that's impartial to you. If I make $100,000 a year, I need people up there that's making $100,000 a year. If I make $400,000 a year, I need people up there $400,000 a year. If I'm an actress or an actor, then I need an actress or an actor up there. Okay? And I'm still a firm believer that it's impartial. Men and women, it scientifically knows that we do not think the same. So me being as a man, I need all men on my uh, jury. Okay? And women out there need all women on these trials. They cannot be mixtures because they do not have the same thinking process, y'all. Women think 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Men has a mental block, a state of mind to actually stop and analyze what's going on. So women out there, they say, well, you never listen to me. No, we are in a mental state of mind trying to figure out what the hell you're saying. <laughs> We're in a little box <laughs> going, what in the hell is she talking about? <laughs> All right, let's proceed for it, y'all. That makes sense. For Roy Dyer is affirmed by the amendments to the Bill of Rights on both state and federal level. So do not let anyone fool you because when you invoke this, they will try to fool you and act as though it's not, but it is. There it is right there. And even if these specific verbiages are not used in the Constitution, which they are. I'm going to pause this for a minute longer. Probably going to end it here pretty quick. There's, you got the basics. All right. But this goes actually for if you can, which you should be able to, because if they don't, it's a violation of due process. You know, you call them out on it on family courts. Okay. And you get a jury trial, um, you know, then it could probably be 50 50, y'all. Um, depends who's making the claim, right? So if the woman's making a claim on the man, then uh, the man gets the jury trial, y'all, and it should be all men. So uh, that would clean up the courts real clear, right? And vice versa. Just saying. Uh, even though, to be all fair and honest, the Attorney General with the 4D program is in contract, so they're the actual ones making the claim. But they kind of pretend like it's the lady doing it. And the attorneys are saying, yeah, we can do this and this. Meanwhile, the attorneys are telling men we can do this and this. And guess what? Dare I say it, 80% of the men are losing. Thanks, attorneys. All right. And then they're not even going to challenge the judge on it without costing an arm and leg. I've heard of people spending $400,000 on attorneys. That's fucking ridiculous. They invoke the right to due process. Have the right to look at who are the people that are going to basically make a determination about your life. That's due process. And even though we use the verb criminal prosecution, I think Rule 4, I'm not sure if it's a specific rule, don't quote me on this, but I think Rule 4 of Federal Rules of Civic Procedure, or the two is the beginning, basically, it tells you that all proceedings are, are civil. So, even if it's criminal, it's presumed to be civil. So, this applies to civil cases also. If this, your ability to cross-examine witnesses or qualify them as witness, or to cross-examine the jury or qualify the jury, it, it's just limited to just one type of cause of action. If you're just doing this just criminal, and it's abrogated with due process. But keep that in mind. According to Bouvier's encyclopedia. Alright, so this video is about 30 minutes long. <clears throat> Yeah, let's just see what a couple of things he has to say on this. Roy Dyer. 
Good thing. Void Iron is a preliminary examination of a witness to a certain whether he, being the witness, to a certain whether he is competent. When a witness is supposed to have an interest in the cause, the party against whom he is called has the choice to so when you see on these courts that men are challenging jurisdictions and all that kind of stuff, uh, and I showed you some case laws on previous videos about uh, challenging jurisdiction is not a sovereign citizen, right? and they get these people to do uh, uh, violations, that's what they do and basing it off of, fire, dire. That's what judges are doing to you. So be careful with that when you actually do this on your own, okay? Uh, so that ver bor dar is very important to understand what they are going to do and call them out. Proofs of Sorry. interest by calling another witness to that fact or he may require the witness produced to be sworn in his voir dire as to whether he has an interest in the cause or not. AKA impartiality. We know it's impossible for judges to be partial. We know judges have bias. Of course you have to prove that by memorializing the situation and just putting in, you know, notice or, or your affidavit regarding the bias or partiality of acting judge so-and-so. Then memorialize the instance, make the claim, show that they acted in a certain way that's detrimental to you based on the fact that you're doing a constitution, you, you're invoking a constitutional secured right. That's the intent right there. And then put their lawyer credentials on record. But, you know, that's another thing. But nonetheless, Boyd is to prove their partiality. It puts the judge on the side. It's prob it would probably be a good idea if you'd also put notice regarding the fact that even though the judge might try to limit the evidence that you're putting in, that the jury's going to be looking at Okay, we're going to end it here, but I wanted to say, uh, all right, since uh, the prosecutor over there does not have first-hand knowledge of anything and they're going to operate now by the state of Texas, I would put Lord Dyer on that attorney or prosecutor, right? Well, it seems like it has authority that it does not have. <laughs> uh, what is it a witness to? Uh, everything he's saying is uh, mumbo jumbo and it's all, you know, uh, hearsay. So you you guys can kind of simplify it. But anyway, um, there you go. All right. This will be the people news. Bye, y'all.